Hello everyone, this is Boricua Binks and welcome back to Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. We are in the fifth case of the game, Turn About a Blaze, and we are still in the ending section. Alright, March 15th, 1.34am, Theatro Neutralis, Lobby. So, what is this interesting thing that you wanted to show me? The trump card and the videotape. These two pieces of evidence together make for the ultimate hand. And this is where the real meaning behind Detective Bard's words will be realized. Detective Gomshoe. Yes, sir! What you see here is security footage shot just before the KG-80 murder occurred. From this footage we know that the, that the card is a directives card from the smuggling ring. This is the section that proves that the card was used to relay an order. The card itself? Or the knife? I mean... How are we supposed to know? I guess the card? I, I don't know. As you can see, Mr. Cochin is holding the card in his right hand. I see. The killer is indeed holding a card with the exact same design on it. But that card and the one you have, just because they look the same doesn't mean that they are, does it now? Ah, oh, but there's a very easy way for me to prove that they are, in fact, one and the same. All we have to do is simply take a look at this. That would be... the blood on the back. This dark red blood. Yes, this is your proof. Proof that the orders on this card were played out in that terrible tragedy. The blood belonged to the victim of the KG-8 incident. With a bit of DNA testing, we can very easily verify that as fact. If you have no objections, then I'd like for you to take a look at this next piece of footage. This car that passed by in front of the victim's apartment building. It's an official Kodopian government car. What? Detective Gomshu, if you could please magnify the footage. I guess we have the ability to do that. <laughs> Maybe he has that machine on him. How big are your pockets, bro? This area of the footage directly links the smuggling ring with Kadopia. Uh, interesting how they're making us do that. <laughs> but I'm going to say this symbol right here. Or is it the... Yeah, right? This section will make it all clear to us. You must be very tired, Mr. Edgeworth. If you continue presenting completely irrelevant evidence like this, afraid your investigation may fall apart. Perhaps it is time for you to retire. I thought it was the flower. Wait. Ugh, but I was so sure it was this area. Alright, focus, Miles. The area I should be pointing out is definitely here. Directly like something in Kadopia. Uh, so we're not looking at the the front of the car. I guess we're looking at this. Take that. The shape of this pocket and the director's card in it. It tells us that without a doubt, this person in this car is Mr. Cochin. Yeah. The license plate on the car was also captured by the security camera, and with it we can easily find out who was sitting in this car on that day ten years ago. <sighs> Which is why I can say with confidence that you were riding in this car on that day. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I thought I saw the flower shape and I was like, oh, that's the symbol of Kodopia, but now I'm thinking... Flowers babal? No, flowers alabaster and butterflies babal? I'm I don't know, I don't remember. Huh. <laughs> oh shit. What the frick was that sound effect? 
Whoa! <laughs> oh, Lord. This man has changed. He is powered up. Music and everything is different now. So, you've revealed your true form, Alba. Damn, you're gonna give yourself arthritis bending over like that all the time. Unless you take something to temporarily ignore their arthritis. You've done well, boy, to make it this far. However, I bet your claim that I was riding in the car at the time. That's going to be mighty difficult to prove. How so? The principality of Godopia no longer exists. So naturally, all records from that time period also no longer exist. Ugh, that arrogance. What he really means is he's already erased all traces of them. Are we finished here, boy? The only weapon I have left to me now is this piece of footage. There must be something here that I can use against him. Okay, I had jumped ahead. I thought this was... <laughs> Alright, well, here we go. That's what happens, Banks. You're always jumping ahead. W what the? I mean, you're playing with your nipples right in front of us, bro. <laughs> That's what it looks like, right? <laughs> Even though we know he's messing with the metal like an idiot. But, uh, that's, like, right next to his nipple. He's like, mm, yes. <laughs> stop, sir, stop. Stop filling yourself up. The Ambassador Alba. Yes, what is it? You were once an army man in the service of Kadopia. And it was you who made the many missions you participated in successes, correct? <laughs> Why the sudden backhanded praises, boy? Although, to be sure, the brilliant medals on my breast were awarded to me during the era of Kadopia. But now I am the only one who owns this particular medal. Oh, really? In that case, the only person it could be who is sitting in this car is you. Oh, do you figure that? By the medal captured here in this footage. It is clearly the same exact medal as the one on your chest. W uh, oh, holy crap, his skin! No, stop! It's so creepy! This is how it will be, but I won't look back. But this is the path that I have chosen. Yeah. <laughs> You've moved me with your devotion to the case, Mr. Edgeworth. Why is he taking such an arrogant stance with me? It's almost looking possible, isn't it? For the lot of you to have come this far. Looks like I just might lose our little game this time. You might lose the game this time? You don't get another round, Mr. Ambassador. Is that a fact? Very well, I've decided to confess and admit my guilt. You're going to confess? And I will accept whatever punishment that may come as a result. What the? Regarding the Damas the Second murder, I admit it, I did it out of self-defense. You're claiming it was justified self-defense? Damas the Second attacked me, and I felt that my life was in danger. If I hadn't done what I did, I might be the one you found dead instead of him. <laughs> What a pathetic performance. <laughs> I'm not giving you one. Wow, you two really know how to laugh at inappropriate times. It's kind of weird. If you wish to claim it was justified self-defense, then you will then we will need some evidence. It's always the evidence with you, isn't it? But if that's what you require, I'll provide it. That man left a mark on me when he attacked. What? 
I don't particularly want to show it off, but this is proof that it was in self-defense. Oh. I'm an old man, and sometimes I don't pay enough attention when I should. But the masked second didn't have a single weapon on his body. Hold on. Talk to the hand. <laughs> It's nothing to get worked up over, because I hid the weapon. You hid it? I'm sorry, but as you know, a murder is a murder, even if it's in self-defense. And I couldn't let it become public, seeing as how I am an ambassador. And this is the weapon you seek, my special bonsai trimming shears. You sure you didn't stab yourself? Hmm... Ugh! It's covered in blood. He was trembling quite badly during our struggle. But that's when he grabbed the shears that were sitting in my office and attacked. So you see, it was an act of self-defense. Is he right, Mr. Edgeworth? Since he has both the wound and the weapon that caused it, it's enough to declare it so. Ah. But we have it as evidence. Hmm. N no way! Oh, which reminds me, I guess there is still one more accusation I need to resolve. Smuggling and counterfeiting. Unfortunately, all of that is my secretary's doing. I had no knowledge it was going on. Stop spewing nonsense. You're trying to throw my investigation under the bus in your desperation. You want to get real honest. Everything in this case can be connected to you. The murder of the Master Second was done in self-defense. In my trials, no man escapes his crime alive. Oh, so you kill all your, <laughs> all your uh, people that you're trying to prosecute. How is it that all the people we were defending, ag defending against you have survived, then. <laughs> Perhaps so, if you were my opponent in court. However, there is one very important fact that I think you may have forgotten. And what is that? I almost gave him Francisco's accent. Ugh. 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 That's what you mean. Extraterritoriality. That's right. Let's start a counter. How many times we gotta say that word <laughs> in this damn case? There we go. This embassy sits on what is effectively Alabastian soil. So any trial that is to be held will be held in Alabast. Therefore, the crime I just admitted to will never be tried in your courts. Agent Lang, what is Interpol's stance on this? Agents investigate, that's our job. The judgment of people who have confessed to their crime, that's the court's job. Ugh. And I've already confessed to all of my crimes, Agent Lang. Furthermore, by the very nature of my position, I have full extraterritorial rights. These rights are effective even on your country's soil, therefore... No matter where a crime may take place, I will never stand trial in one of your courts. That arrogance and your expression... It's nothing like the face of someone who is ready to accept the consequences. Don't tell me you have your own country's judicial system eating right out of your hands. These crimes you all speak so seriously of. To me, this has all been nothing more than a game. Breaking the fourth wall, Alba? You may chase me out of this embassy with your accusations. But it's no big deal. No biggie, as they say. <laughs> Alabast has numerous other embassies in other countries around the world. 
All you would accomplish is you would change the backdrop of our little game. These two layers of protection that extraterritoriality provides him. This is why he is one of those who cannot be brought to court. You see now, don't you? I live in a whole different world than you. Now, if you excuse me, I need to go and fetch your eviction papers. Huh, he walks away like it's nothing. <sighs> is there nothing we can do? To be continued. Okay. Wasn't expecting one of those here. Well, we're gonna keep going, though. This is not time to end the episode. Alright, March 15, 2, 11 a.m. Oh my god. Y'all must be so exhausted. I could not stay up that late anymore. <laughs> Can't believe it, sir. Extraterritoriality. Yes, and there was nothing we can really do about that. In the end, we didn't have enough authority to bring him to justice. I can't believe that even though we know he's the boss, we can't lay a finger on him. I know. Hey. Prosecutor, sorry to skip out on you, but I've got some business to take care of. Okay. If we can't even give an evil guy like him a slap on the wrist, then what the heck were we were laws created for? What good are they? And the, if the law can't help us, then I'll go as the Yadakarasu and take care of this myself. Don't you dare. Mr. Edgeworth. Sorry, that was a bit too harsh. I know how you feel, sir. We're trying to take on an ambassador, after all. And he did tell us earlier to get out of the theater. This is kind of their country, I guess. But I feel like I've been slapped across the face just for doing my job. What am I going to do? Should I retreat for now and formulate a better plan of attack? Hold it! Oh, hold it! Come on, everyone, we can't give up yet. Okay. I want you to think about something for a sec. We've never let up for even a second, and as long as we don't stop investigating, we might find the rotten treasure hidden here. She's right! Come on, Mr. Edgeworth. You're right, Kay. Very well, let us reopen the investigation and see what we find. Come on, Kay. Right behind you. Okay, then I'll go check out the ball a bit more, sir. And I have something that I need to investigate further in Alabast. You sure he's gonna let you in? <laughs> or is she gonna sneak in before he uh, officially evicts them? Okay, bye, Francisca. Now then, before I gather any more information, I should do a bit of housekeeping. Passion flowers data erased from my organizer. Alright. Ambassador Alba seemed agitated over something. I sense that there is something he doesn't want us to investigate. Okay. I wonder why. There are two special circumstances that surround the ambassador. First, the embassy itself has extraterritorial rights. If something happens on Alabastian soil, we are unable to legally prosecute him. Cool! It sounds like embassies are the perfect place to steal whatever you want. And murder Damas the second, run a smuggling operation, and make counterfeit bills, apparently. But I thought all the counterfeiting was done by Mr. Cochin and Babal. Yes, he apparently used the embassy's coupon printing press to do it. 
But it's the, it's the same story over there anyway. Pabal also has extraterritorial rights. Which brings me to my next point. The Ambassador's extraterritorial rights. Those rights are effective even in our own country. Really? No matter what happens, he can never be tried in our courts. He retains some very special rights indeed. Basically, no matter what wrongs he may commit, we can't bring him to trial here. So I guess we really don't stand a chance, do we? Hmm... We might stand a chance if we can somehow nullify either one of his special rights. Okay. Yes? Agitated Alba. Mr. Edgeworth, if you don't pay attention, Ambassador Alba's gonna get away. Y yes, I know. Now hurry up and do that schwing thing you always do. <laughs> schwing. I have no idea what you are talking about. Okay, maybe not a swing, more of a whoosh? What? You don't? Oh, come on, you know what I'm talking about, that thing you do. Are you talking about logic? Yes, that's it, so hurry up and let's whoosh already! Alright, alright. To be honest, it's been a bit hard to connect everything up until now by just looking. However, I should be able to piece things together if I take another look at my leads. Perhaps now is the time to use logic and reason my way to the truth. Alright, that was a good hint then. Let's look. It's been a while. Agitated Alba, Cochin's counterfeiting up, renovations. Huh. Renovations from top to bottom. Oh, the printing press. Where is that? I'm wondering if that's connected. Let's try it. And whoosh or swing, as she says. <laughs> we know that the counterfeit bills were printed using the embassy's press. But the necessary materials, such as the bobbly zinc and paper, must have been hidden in a secure location. But what do you think would have happened if the renovation had begun? Well, he probably had to find a better hiding place, or get rid of it all. Right, so we can assume that the renovation was the cause of the plate and bill's disposal. And the reason Mr. Cochin was killed as the ringleader of the smuggling operation. Oh. Based on what we know, who do you think was the one with the most to gain? Uh, the most to gain? Of course, Alba. It's the one person who has been erasing all evidence of the smuggling operation. From both embassies. The co-conspirator who is mopping up. Ambassador Alba. Ambassador Alba had a very strong motive to kill Manny Cochin. Alba could conveniently place all the guilt for smuggling onto Cochin. Okay. Uh, so that's what we're gonna figure then? That he he killed Cochin, right? Which we hadn't thought of until now. We've only been focusing on the the Alabastian murder. The cause of Ambassador Alba's agitation, the rotten treasure we may find, and the motive for killing Mr. Cochin. Miss Yu said it herself that she didn't kill anyone tonight. If we were to take her words at face value, then the reason for the Ambassador's nervousness can only be one thing. He didn't want us to discover the real circumstances under which Mr. Cochin was killed. Then you mean Ambassador Alba's the real killer? But I thought the two of them were friends. Maybe they were, but what if Mr. Cochin was the one who first betrayed their friendship? Oh, I get it. Wasn't Mr. Cochin pushing really hard for Mr. Palino to be ambassador after the reunification? 
Yes, and that was the real reason why he wanted to steal Alibar's prima doc statue. So Mr. Cochin hired the masked second to go steal it for him. But when Ambassador Alba found out what he was up to, he killed Mr. Cochin? It is definitely a possibility at this point. Those two really were thinking of no one but themselves. But the question now is, how did he do it? Ambassador Alba was an alabast. But Mr. Cochin's body was discovered in Babal, right? Right, and that is what we must solve next. Hmm. Okay. At this point, actually... No. We actually need to... Look around here. Um... Oh, this is new, actually. This wasn't here before. This was taken just before the two ambassadors gave their bouquets to the steel samurai. It's so weird how he's still faking to be that old, shriveled, weak man. Aw, oh, Polano's so handsome. <laughs> Larry, what are you doing to two ambassadors? Gave their bouquets to the steel samurai. <laughs> Wait, is it just my imagination? Or is there something in this picture that I've seen before? Every nook and cranny. Alright. Larry. <laughs> There's that troublemaker standing there smack in the center making two peace signs. Wow, the steel samurai stands out even more than the two ambassadors in this picture. Oh hey, the person playing the steel samurai is one of your friends, right? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no, I have no idea who he is. Wait, but you just said he. You knew which gender he was, so you must know him, right? Hey, good job, Kay. I beg that you please refrain from talking about that person with me ever again. <laughs> Don't make me think about it. Aw, Polano. Mr. Polano has a really great smile, don't you think? I bet he was really happy that they were going to become Kodopia again. Perhaps, but instead he became the greatest victim in today's case. An ambassador like him who is always thinking of his country is really to be admired. Aww. Yeah, although this happened, I hope they'll be able to reunite the country someday. I hope so as well, but for that to happen we need to solve this case first. We need to see to it that those who would harm the new Kodopia are locked away. And we will. Aww. Alright, you a-hole. I can't believe he was pretending to be a harmless old grandpa. Talk about deceptive. I don't suppose anyone expected him to change that drastically. I bet he's thinking of something evil behind that cheery smile. Kate, please try to remain calm and focused on the here and now. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, I got all worked up there. Well, the only way we're going to be able to steal the truth is if we keep on investigating. Alright, so what we actually need to look at is the flowers. This, this one in particular, the yellow one. Doesn't look like a normal flower, does it? It appears to be a bouquet of Persian cyclamens and roses. Wow, you even know the exact species? I never would have figured you for an expert on flowers. Yeah. It's all because of the flowers that a lady sends me every month. <laughs> Wow, Wendy, you're really going all out to woo him, huh? Just look at me. I sound like some sort of botanist. So, um, what exactly is this yellow flower here? Hmm, that one, I'm not sure. What? You don't know? As far as I can recall, I've never seen a flower like this before. But I feel as though I've seen this shape somewhere before. Alright. Time to do some deducing. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Yes. I mean, just look at it, yo. Look at that. Uh huh. There's one. This is. There is a striking flower ornament on the handle of this knife. Compared to the Bubbly's knife's handle, this larger one gives Olabas more presence. B 
Gabor's national symbol is the butterfly, and alabaster is the flower. It would appear that someone is employing the old hide-a-tree-in-a-forest trick. What are you mumbling to yourself about? Wait, what? The handle on this knife? Ah! Yes, it's the handle that was supposed to be on the blade that killed Mr. Cochin. The weapon that killed him was carried through the Theatrum Neutralis. In the very bouquet Ambassador Alba was carrying. There we go. Hmm? The flower motif. Looks like one of the flower petals is missing. Yeah, I just noticed that too. Oh, and take a look at the weapon itself. It's missing the exact same petal. And the knife in this photo is most definitely the same as this murder weapon. Alright. I believe we now understand why Ambassador Alba was so nervous and agitated. It must have something to do with where Mr. Cochin was killed. A place where the Alabastian ambassador was likely to meet the Babalese Mr. Cochin. The place where Ambassador Alba happened to have committed the murder is... You gotta think of, you know, the circumstances of where, when that picture was taken and where everybody would be. It would be here. The only place that makes sense is here, at the Theatrum Neutralis. What? Here? The Goodwill event was being held here today, correct? So the only place that the both of them would have been is in here. But if that's the case, then everything changes. This theater isn't exact isn't actually Elevastian land. So that wipes out one of those extraterritorial rights he has. This makes logical sense, in which case it is a reason for us to investigate further. So, what should we check out? Let's see. I believe we should check the immigration records for both Alabas and Barbol post-haste. Barbol's records should be easy to obtain, however, the problem would be Alabas. I wonder if they would allow us to see their records, despite the fact to... despite the order to vacate. Hey, that's probably what she was doing. Yay, she's coming in handy. <laughs> I'm already one step ahead of you, my is Edgeworth. Francisco. I have here the security footage from both Alabasta and Babal. You will do well to take a look at its contents. Okay. You move fast. Avant Karma strives to be perfect in every way. It's not in my nature to keep on retreating like this. I took the liberty of looking over the Babal investigation reports as well. From now on, you will make no excuse to back down or say that we can't solve this case. <sighs> I'm sorry about earlier. We won't be beaten. Because my cute little subordinate is going to try his very best, isn't he? Hasn't she patronized me enough already for a lifetime? No. <laughs> so this video contains footage from Alabas immigration screening area. I really hope there's something in here that we can use. Oh. Oh. So the sound effects. <laughs> Which minutes footage should I examine? Well, I think we'll do that in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this. We're getting so much closer to getting this guy. <sighs> it's, it's an uphill battle. <laughs> but anyway, until next time, have a nice day. Bye-bye.